everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm Chase, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different than what we typically do. Um, I'm gonna be showing you guys what I carry every day, all my EDC items, um, and why I pick those items. Um, but uh, first, I wanted to give you guys a couple updates. Um, me and Kat are having a baby, which is coming in May, so that's really exciting. Um, and uh, we're, we're really excited about that. Uh, but other than that, I apologize if there's any noise in the background. I've got two dogs playing on the back deck. And we're really working on trying to get this house together for the holidays. So I apologize if there's any vibration or anything like that, but uh, bear with me. But anyway, so let's get into um, the EDC items that I picked, um, that I carry every day and why I picked them. So uh, to get started, um, I picked this uh, wallet. This is just a, uh, a genuine leather wallet that is uh, Ragnar. Hey, Ragnar. So I picked this... Uh, <laughs> I picked this uh, genuine leather wallet, which is handmade. I picked it up in um, Parkville, Missouri at a place called Cool Watches. It's a, uh, it's called Wound Steel is the people that made it. It's a, uh, it's a cra I think it's a local craftsman that made it. I, I just saw that they had some leather products in there um, that were all handmade and, and locally made. And I thought they were super cool and they um, are supposed to last for a super long time. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, um, I gotta go up on that. So I, um, got this and the reason I like these over the things like the Ridge wallets that you see nowadays the Ridge wallets are pretty cool um, But I have really no need for one because uh, when I look at them the biggest thing that I see Happening is that I'm, I'm sitting on my wallet all the time I don't live in Colorado and you guys know I go to Colorado a lot for for ro uh, for road trips and for overlanding um, so sitting on a sitting on a Sort of a plastic wallet. This does not sound appealing to me and some of you guys might say well take it out I forget my wallet if I take it out of my pocket. If I put it in the car someplace else and I, and I don't have it in my pocket, I always have to go back for it. And I also don't like a wallet sitting out in the open or, or uh, sitting in the car. Uh, you know, I'd rather be on my person so it doesn't get stolen. So I really like um, uh, carrying my wallet with me. Ridge, I feel like with long road trips, probably wouldn't be the best option for that. Plus, leather is just so classic looking. I think that maybe people find it boring nowadays because it's just what everybody has. But I think investing into a good handcrafted leather wallet is really important it's got smooth edges it's not gonna you know be as uncomfortable it's usually it can get uncomfortable you know any wallet can get uncomfortable but i go with a bifold because it sits a little flatter sits a little more low profile um so i think the leather wallet and then as long as it's you know handcrafted real leather you can't go wrong so uh, again this is wound steel and that's with three o's it's w-o-o-o-n steel which is kind of weird. I haven't been able to find anything online, so I won't be able to link it. Um, but uh, basically just go out and look for a nice, genuine, um, handcrafted leather wallet. I think you can't go wrong with that. The next item I like to carry is uh, my Zippo lighter. Now, um, this is just a, and you guys will kind of notice the theme here. I like something, stuff very simple, very uh, um, not flashy. And so I have this um, simple, um, <laughs> Zippo lighter with uh, the basic setup, the basic uh, sort of side shielding or whatever. Um, and the reason I go with this is because it's pretty versatile uh, little lighter. You can carry it on planes, um, just like a big lighter. And uh, you, um, the only thing is it's a bit of a high maintenance lighter. You have to fill it with, you have to fill it with uh, um, liquid even if you don't use it occasionally because the the butane will evaporate and then even if you don't use it it'll go away so you have to refill it but if you just check it every once in a while make sure it's still full and fill it when it gets empty you know replace the the flint when it go when it uh, wears out um, that is uh, it's not that big of a deal you know I keep a little butane bottle in my house um, so not a huge deal I like it a lot I also smoke a pipe so um, it's really important to use regular flames um, other than the uh, sort of jet flames, those little blue jet flames. Not to mention that if you do smoke a pipe, um, you shouldn't be using blue, uh, blue those jet, uh, those f like force jet um, lighters because it will scorch your bowl, it'll scorch your briar. So you don't want to do that. Um, you want to use these. And I actually do have another Zippo that is specifically for pipe smoking. It's got a, it's got a cover um, on the top and then it's got a, a big hole on the side. Um, so when you put it sideways, the flame goes up, and when you suck through the, the bit, it will pull the flame down into your tobacco, light your tobacco, and uh, 
that's really nice, but it's a lot less versatile. So the one I carry on me every day is just a regular one. It's good in the wind. Um, it's great for camping. Um, and it's just, a, it's a really great lighter that you can pretty much take anywhere, including on a plane. So I like these a lot. The next item that I carry around um, is a little lanyard. I'll show you guys. I can't remember the brand name, but there's the brand logo. Um, I got this at Shields. Um, there's a section sort of by the sunglasses um, in most all of the stores. It's actually by the uh, women's clothing area and the purses, consequently, because um, I believe it's actually primarily catered towards women. But these lanyards are, I like the short lanyards. It allows me to, you know, put clip on different items onto my keychain easily. Um, plus also access my keys really easily. So I really like uh, a small little lanyard. I don't like long lanyards. I think they get caught on things and they're a bit annoying, but little lanyards, I think are super convenient and I like them a lot. So I have that. I also have, uh, before I show you guys my main EDC knife, I have my little Swiss Army um, keychain knife, which is nice. It's got a total of five tools on it, um, which I use every single one. Um, the one I use the most is going to be this guy right here. So this is the little file plus the um, flathead screwdriver, um, which is just super handy. I don't, obviously don't carry a screwdriver everywhere I go. So this little thing I used on tons and tons of applications. It's super, super convenient, super nice. Um, and then there's obviously the little knife, which I tip, actually use the least on this tool. Um, but if you know you need something that's you don't need to pull out your big knife for, but you, you still need to cut something. That's that's nice and convenient. You also have little scissors. This is probably what I use the second most on this tool. These scissors are great for cutting little thread, you know, doing little precise cuts. I actually even cut my fingernails with those. Those are super convenient. And there's a little, I think this is supposed to be a toothpick. I don't know why you would want to use a reusable toothpick. So I don't use this for pretty much anything. Um, and then the tweezers, obviously, which are a great little tool. I actually forget I have these a lot too. Uh, and when I remember I have them, they're super nice. So that's pretty much it for the Swiss Army knife. Um, I keep this on my keys, um, so it's really nice. I just pop it off when I need to use it, and those are great. Um, let's get into my phone case. Now, obviously, I carry I carry an iPhone, um, and so and that's what I'm recording with right now. So I took it, I took the case off to record the video. Um, and this is the UAG Pathfinder, I believe. And this was I think a I think they came out with this one about two years ago when the 11 uh, Pro Max came out or the 11 Pro came out. And uh, I've always used UAG. UAG is Urban Armor Gear. Um, and they're they're supposed to be catered towards military people um, and their phones and stuff like that. And they have just a great simple lip around the outside right here that makes for a great um, protection for your screen. Um, and I've dropped my phone. I am so clumsy with my phone. I actually broke my, phone, my 11 Pro when I first bought it. A week after getting it and actually brought it to the to the Apple store to get it replaced and they said they were surprised I was even able to break it the way I broke it because it broke into the corner and then up into the camera square which is not supposed to be possible the camera square is supposed to have sort of like a protection protective sort of ring around it that doesn't allow cracks to travel into the camera area um, and uh, it did so they were surprised and uh, I ended up getting a UAG case afterwards because I'd always had UAG cases and I was waiting for this one to come in when I broke my phone. Of course, that's always how it goes. But uh, they're super great. Um, the only thing is that sometimes dust gets in here, so I occasionally take it off and clean off out the inside, clean off the phone. And uh, um, other than that, it's a really great case. It's always kept my... I've never broken a phone with one of these phone cases on, on there, whether that's with or without a, a, a tempered glass screen protector, which I also always use. Um, but yeah, uh, UAG, I would highly recommend them. The Pathfinder, I think, is a nice, classic, simple, mono-colored looking, um, not too flashy. I like that case a lot. So let's get on into some of my self-defense items. Let me get a drink here. I guess if you want to call this a EDC item, this is uh, just a uh, Yeti, what, 16-ounce tumbler? Ah. Those are, those are super nice. You can get a lot of cheaper ones too. I, I wouldn't recommend Yeti over other things, but there's lots of expensive brands out there nowadays. You got Hydro Flask and Yeti, but um, I've always had Yeti. Um, when I worked at uh, the lumber yard I worked at, which is also was a department store, um, I had good deals on Yeti, so I would always buy Yetis, but they're good, and uh, so I use them. Uh, next is my EDC knife, um, which is a Benchmade 
Uh, this I, I specifically bought this uh, for self-defense and uh, daily use, which is uh, why I picked Benchmade. But this is the Benchmade Barrage um, Tanto without the serration. This comes with a half serrated as well. Excuse me, half serrated uh, option as well. But uh, I didn't. I chose not to do that because um, for self-defense you want to typically st stay away from uh, serration. Um, so uh, this is a really great knife. A couple of things that I like about it um, are that it's assisted opening. So they have, an, this is their, their tactical uh, lineup. They have a, a bunch of different tactical knives and this is one of them, the Barrage. And uh, so it's a bit thicker, it's a bit bigger. And since I'm a bigger guy, I can kind of get away with that. Um, but they do have a smaller like EDC lineup, which is a lot thinner. I'm not a big fan of those. I prefer um, something with a bit more heft to it. I like the assisted opening. I think that's really important. Um, and uh, it's also got 154 CM steel, which is a nice strong steel. Um, the last knife I had was the uh, Sog Trident, which had OS 8 steel, which isn't bad. It's a Japanese steel, um, but it didn't hold an edge as well as I hoped it would. And I used it a lot too, and I use my knives a lot um, on the daily. So uh, if a blade can't hold its edge, um, that's a big problem for me. But this 154CM, it, um, even though it's not that much higher than OS8 on the hardness scale, it is has been able to hold its edge significantly better. So for whatever reason, it's just uh, much better at that. It, uh, and that could be because of the tempering process of however they do it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure how it works, but Benchmade has always been really great about that. You get what you pay for. Benchmade, I think this is a 150 some dollar knife. So it's not a cheap knife, um, but it's a, it's a really good knife. You get what you pay for. The things that I don't like about the knife uh, this lock here. So this is a little lock that locks it open and closed. So if I turn the lock on, I can't open it. If I if I turn it off, I can, and then I can lock it open as well. It doesn't allow me to close it. So um, I guess that's for locking it open. I, I can see the importance of that when it comes to maybe things like survival. If you're looking to like put this on a spear tip, you don't want the knife to fold on you when you're thrusting into an animal or whatever. So that locking it open is, is nice, although if you are thrusting into something, because the, the thing that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense about it is that the only way you can close this knife is by this little, this little button slide, right? So the, I guess the idea is that if you lock it, the button slide doesn't slide, right? But if anything is going to close this slide to close the knife, it would also close the lock because the lock slides back too. So it's not really, <laughs> doesn't really make much sense um, to lock it open in my opinion. I just think that this would be a better knife without the lock because it's another thing too that you can actually turn on in your pocket and then when you need to deploy it in a self-defense scenario that's something you got to unlock before you can deploy your knife and you know who knows what can happen in those little moments so i don't i'm not a huge fan of of locks on knives that are for self-defense but it's a decent knife and i really like this um it's probably my favorite knife that i've carried so far um but uh the other important thing is the clip so i actually carry it below the pocket which i know is kind of contradictory to what i just said because if, you know, if I'm going to put it below my pocket and then say that I don't want to lock, you know, the lock adds time. So does putting it under, in, under your pocket. So which do you want? Well, I am really clumsy with everything. So I, when I carry this above my pocket line, it, uh, it I dent my car. I'm really bad at that, you know, scraping my car and, and, you know, bumping into things. And so I, just for the sake of protecting the paint on my car and, and, you know, the body on my car, I actually put this below my pocket. Otherwise I just dent things and I'm really clumsy. So, um, but I really like this clip. It's low profile. It's not very long. And just like the soft trident, it's really, it's, you know, it doesn't scream. I'm carrying a knife, which I like a lot. So and that's important. If you're, if you're trying to carry something for self-defense, you don't want to scream. I'm carrying a knife. So that's a, um, a, a nice clip. The one on, by the way, the one on the Trident um, broke. It was not very good. This one is a nice, a nice solid. It's actually a bit too solid in my opinion. It's got such a tension. Like it's hard to get it um, uh, open sometimes to get it around your belt or your, around your pocket um, edge, but it's a, it's a really good clip. Really great knife. I love this knife. And uh, Benchmade is always a great company. So really appreciate them. Um, the next thing, um, which uh, I don't carry every day as much as I should. I carry it around the house, um, but uh, because of my moving scenarios, I haven't been able to legally carry at this time, but I'll go ahead and show it to you guys anyway. I have uh, a Smith & Wesson, um, um, a Smith & Wesson M&P 9mm full size. I also carry the uh, critical defense rounds, um, which I know are kind of cliche, but uh, they're good rounds. So 
I, um, I like those. But uh, the Smith & Wesson MP is a, a decent, a decent uh, pistol. The only thing that people complain about is the trigger. And as you can see, I don't have the stock trigger on here. I have an Apex trigger, which is really nice. And I put this in the T-Rex Arms Appendix Sidecar, which uh, is a, a really nice, um, really nice uh, uh, concealed carry um, option here. Uh, I switched from the four o'clock uh, uh, alien gear holster, um, cloak, the cloak tuck one. And I started, and I carried four o'clock cause I'm a bigger guy. And I thought that was what I needed to do and that you couldn't carry appendix. And it is di more difficult to carry appendix when you've got a gut, that's for sure. But, uh, the biggest problem that I ran into with the cloak tuck is that the back side of it is leather. And as we know, leather can be dangerous for concealed carry. If you conceal carry a lot, which I did, and the leather will start to bend in eventually uh, threatening to breach your trigger hold, your trigger guard. So that's very dangerous. And I started to monitor my leather and realized that it was doing exactly that. And I decided I need to get away from that holster. So um, as much as I like Alien Gear as a company, I think that um, I would recommend staying away from the cloak tuck because of the leather if you plan on carrying a lot. And honestly, you should always be carrying with uh, Kydex on front and back or some sort of hard covered um, thing. It's very, it's very um, dangerous to carry with anything other than hard because it can uh, snag that trigger and pull the trigger and you can shoot yourself. Not ideal, especially if you're carrying appendix, you don't want to shoot off some valuable parts. So I really like this holster um, and uh, it's got a great little retention, great little click as it comes in and it also has a spare mag. Um, it also has this uh, little raptor claw here, which you'll see a lot on a lot of the other um, holsters you can get, but this pushes your belt out, which pushes the gun further into you, which is important if you're a bigger dude because you want that to be nice and concealed. You don't want it, you don't want to print as bad. Um, so this helps with that. It also helps to keep that pistol right where it's supposed to be and it's nice and solid. You can also get a full grip around your pistol um, just like that, um, as opposed to having to, you know, kind of finesse it to get it out of the holster. You can get a full grip on it. You might have to cover, cover your sights before you can pull it out, you might be, not be able to get your thumb around the gun, but you can definitely get a full grip with your uh, your fingers and then pull it out. So it's got good adjustment, it's a good holster. So I've chose this one, it's a great holster so far, I'm really loving it. And uh, I hopefully be carrying that every day and all day wherever I go. Um, so, uh, but that's pretty much uh, wraps up everything that I carry on the daily, obviously besides um, my keys for the Toyota. So, that would be uh um that would pretty be pretty much it but uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you guys want to see um anything linked um as to where i got it just uh put a uh a comment down below and i will link it in the description but uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one